Hi, this is Bill Frank reporting for KADYTV.com at the Memorial Day celebration here at Ivy Lawn Cemetery in Ventura, California. Very solemn event today that we're proud to have covered for our third year in a row. The Memorial Day event is filled with festivities. We'll see military honor guards. We'll see honor guards from the Cub Scouts. A variety of organizations, including the Knights of Columbus, will be here to lay wreaths at the graves of our fallen heroes. In fact, if you look back historically, Memorial Day, by its name Memorial Day, has only been around for a couple of generations. Before that, it was known as Decoration Day, the day that we uh, so the citizens came out and decorated the graves of the fallen soldiers that had died in previous wars. And Decoration Day had been honored by uh, people in the North and the South going as far back as the Civil War. It wasn't until 1868 when a general by the name of John Haynes said that this should be a national holiday and should be celebrated celebrated by uh, both sides, North and South, that it became a national holiday. And then it was only in the 1950s and 60s when the name was changed from Decoration Day to what it's now known as Memorial Day. Memorial Day typically kicks off the summer season, but before we jump into the fun and the festivities of summer, it's always good to remember the fallen heroes that have died and gone before us and give, give us the freedom and the opportunity to enjoy all of the free time and the benefits that we have living here in the United States. Of course, we celebrate the dead of all the wars going all the way back to our own American Revolution where we had 25,000 Americans died in that particular conflict, all the way up through Operation Freedom, which is the combination of Iraq and Afghanistan wars that we're just now terminating in the year 2012. And in between, of course, we've had major events, World Wars I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and then the first Iraqi Gulf War as well. All told, the war dead in this country amount to roughly 6,250,000 war dead throughout the, throughout the generations, giving us the freedoms that we enjoy today. An interesting side note for that, because the holiday was first known as Decoration Day, Decoration Day, one of the, um, one of the festivities that people did was they would bring a lunch out in pots and eat by the gravesides of the fallen warriors there, spread a blanket, put down the pots, and everyone would take a little bit from each of the pots. In fact, that's where we got the term potluck dinner coming from Decoration Day, the precursor, precursor to Memorial Day. This is Bill Frank reporting from Ivy Lawn Cemetery in Ventura, California for KADYTV.com. Hi, this is Bill Frank reporting for KADYTV.com, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Tim Gallagher, who is not only the MC but one of the coordinators of today's events for Memorial Day here at Ivy Lawn Cemetery in Ventura. Tim, thank you so much for being my guest. What a wonderful ceremony. I'm telling you, it was great. We had more people out here than I can remember, and I've been coming to these for about 10, 12 years biggest crowd we've ever had. They were overflow capacity. Now, how long does it take to put together an event of this size and magnitude? Well, we have a great PR person on staff at Ivy Lawn, Terry Taylor Gonzalez, and she's been doing this long enough to where she handles it. But I think Terry puts weeks into this, getting everything lined up. And you saw all those groups of people coming up today, laying their wreath. He has to line all them up. She has to get them to check in. She has to give them the rules. So Terry's really the unsung hero of this, Bill. Well, kudos to her for that. But you were the front man for this, so you were acting as the MC today at the event. What? Uh, it's an honor, certainly, to be chosen. How did you become the spokesperson for Memorial Day ceremonies? Um, I have been on the board here at Ivy Lawn Memorial Park. It's a nonprofit, and it's run by a board of five folks with our uh, board president. And um, you know, uh, I'm an Irishman. You give me a microphone, I can stand in front of a crowd forever. You know? <laughs> well, that's good to hear. No loss for words there. No, not at all. What does Memorial Day mean to you as an American and obviously as the board member yeah. here at Ivy Lawn? You know, it is a day for reflection. It's a day, I think, as Jeff Gorell put it so nicely, a day to remember that for 99 of us are out here enjoying our freedom. 
there's one serviceman or woman out there fighting to keep this country free. And, you know, that is the time, that is the day for us to stop, pause, think about that, give thanks for that, and maybe keep it going the other 364 days of the year. That is great. Now, this is not the only event that you do. You also do a Veterans Day event, don't you, we in do. November? We do. We have a Veterans Day event and uh, very similar, similar size crowd. Not the laying of the wreaths, but more tribute to the veterans. And uh, that's another one that's great and has a similar size crowd. Well, thank you for all of your service and the thank work you, that you do thank here. Thank you guys for being out here with us today and recording this. It's I'm great. I'm joined by one of our elected officials, Das Williams, is joining me here. Das, thank you so much for being my guest. Tell me, why are you here and why does this event mean so much to you? Well, for many reasons. Number one, I think that we always need to pay respect to those that have fallen, whether they fell uh, in defense of our country or whether they were thinking about the ideals that our, our nation stands for or whether they were just trying to defend their friends and comrades. Um, whatever the reason that our soldiers of our nation give their lives, uh, I think it's something that we need to celebrate. Uh, uh, we can hold up uh, our uh, warriors no matter what we feel about uh, a, a war, whether you're for it or against it. We all need to be celebrating our warriors, and uh, especially those that have fallen, uh, but also the ones that are still living and still need our, our help and support. Oh, well said, well said. Now you yourself are going into a battle of sorts. This is more of a political battle, not to be confused with any war battles of that nature. But you're uh, going to be up for re-election mm -hmm. this year. You're entering into a campaign. Tell us a little bit about your campaign. Why are you the best candidate to seek the office? Well, number one, I've been very proud of my service. I serve on the Veterans Committee, the Education Committee, and the Health Committee uh, for Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. And we uh, have made some real progress, even in some tough times. Um, we've reduced the budget deficit uh, by tens of billions of dollars, which has been very difficult. We've been able to uh, preserve education funding in very tough times. Uh, and we've been able to do some very good things for giving veterans opportunities in employment and education. Uh, and I think all of those are important right now. Uh, I would say, for, as far as our prosperity goes, the most important thing, however, has been uh, the work that we've done on alternative energy. Uh, we uh, have uh, created a, a mandate that a third of our energy will come from renewables in the last year, and that has been sending the right signal to the private sector, and they've been creating huge investments in solar, wind, and geothermal energy. All right, and those are very important energies. How long will it take for those investments to come to fruition, Das? Some of them are already coming online. Um, more of them will come on the line in the next few years. But what I'm trying to make sure is that we also get the boon of some of those jobs right here. Uh, because I think our community has the education level, uh, has the bright sunshine, and has all the things that we need uh, to be a center ourselves of alternative energy investment. That is great. And what are you doing to help attract those companies to set up shop here in Ventura? Well, number one, we've uh, created about a, a $50 million worth of work uh, in um, uh, energy efficiency in government buildings. So that reduces our ongoing costs, but puts stuff out there um, for, uh, uh, you know, roofers, uh, uh, folks who work on, on, on HVAC systems, insulation. Um, that kind of work um, is, has very, very high unemployment right now. So that's really what we're trying to do is target there and target on, on a good investment. And we're also working on uh, household ge geothermal and solar systems. Uh, because that's something that can be done anywhere, and especially places that are as progressive as Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. That is great. Now, before I let you go, I do want to ask you one thing about the gridlock that many of Ventura County residents see happening in our assembly in California right now. You are part of that gridlock today, <laughs> and but the question that I'm sure that's on many people's minds is, what are you going to do to help alleviate some of this gridlock if elected again? Well, we're going to do something, and we've begun doing something in the last year, and I think we're continuing it. We've said, you know, instead of just um, going nowhere, and uh, because it used to be that Republicans were for cuts and Democrats were uh, for tax increases, the, de the, the depth of the problem is so much in the state that if we're going to offer a good education system, if we're going to do good things in the state and we're going to be able to sell bonds to get people back at work, we're going to have to do both. And so we've 
uh, embraced uh, some very difficult cuts, uh, but we've also got to make sure that we pass the governor's tax initiative and we get through this gridlock and on the road to a solution for the state of California. That is great. My guest has been Das Williams, candidate for the assembly and also here one of the dignitaries at the Memorial Day celebration at Ivy Lawn Cemetery oh, yeah. in Ventura. I am joined by some very special guests who are out here on an errand. They are doing some duty for the Cub Scouts and I want them to introduce themselves. We'll start with you. What's your name? John Henry. And your name? Just Blake. first names. Blake. Eli. Connor. Landon. And they're here. Well, I'll have them tell you why you're here. Guys, why are you here? Well, we're here to celebrate Memorial Weekend, and we're here, I'm here just to have fun. Well, that's good. Now, I noticed that you're carrying around cans, and the cans have flowers on them. And from the sounds of it, it sounds like there's quite a lot of money inside of there. What are you doing collecting the money? Um, I don't really know. Well, we're, we're asking people for donations which I don't really know why they're asking for donations. It could be for buying food and drinks for everyone. All right. I don't really know. Well, donations, and if you look at the can, may I see the can here? You can see here you get a poppy for every donation that you get, and people have been very, very generous. What sort of response are you getting from people? Are they giving you money? Yes, I got a $5 donation by one lady. Very nice, $5 donations. Well, guys, how long are you going to be here? Are you going to be here for the entire ceremony? Yeah. Good. Well, we hope to see you around here. Thank you so much for being on TV. Ventura. Hannah Beth Jackson. Hannah Beth, thank you so much for being my guest. What a lovely scarf and how appropriate on Memorial Day. Well, it is Memorial Day. It's our opportunity to, to celebrate the service of our uh, war heroes and, and particularly Memorial Day to celebrate those who uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, Boy, we go back now, we've got some World War II veterans all the way up to this very day, and it, it really makes one uh, uh, thankful, appreciative, and yet hoping that this will be the end of it. Uh, we, we've seen too many of our finest young men and women uh, leave their lives on the battlefield. It's, but it's, it's a very moving uh, experience to be here with about a thousand people from, again, World War II all the way up to present day, and a chance to reflect and honor their service. And you were up on the stage today as one of the dignitaries, so this clearly means something to you. For how many years have you been coming to the Memorial Day services here? Well, I've uh, gone to several of them. Uh, I did many of these when I was uh, in the assembly a uh, few years ago. I try to go to at least one or two of them. Unfortunately, in the in the district, if you will, they're they're usually at the same time, so you have to choose, you have to decide which ones to come to, but this is always one of the most moving because it does get a huge turnout and we have such a large representation of, of veterans uh, from wars ba dating back 50, 60 years now. Yeah, very representative. Now, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about your upcoming campaign. You're running for office again this election year. Tell us why you are the superior candidate in your race. Well, I, I, I believe that I have demonstrated through my experience and the work I've done that I really have an understanding of the issues that are facing us today, and I have a vision of what we need to do to put California back on track and help our community get re, restart our economy through uh, high-tech and, and green jobs that I think are critically important to the 21st century and to our community, and uh, my strong commitment to education, which I think is the key to the our economic well-being. We've got these fabulous uh, schools and universities here in our in the 19th district that starts up at Allen Hancock College, University of California, Santa Barbara, Ventura College, Oxnard, all the way down to Cal State University, Channel Islands. I mean, a great opportunity to move us forward uh, and to really re reinvigorate our education system. And I've served uh, on the Higher Education Committee. I know how to get the job done. I think I have the record that demonstrate is, uh, demonstrates that I have gotten the job done, and I've got the enthusiasm and the desire to get back for for better or for worse back into this and try to help turn the state around. Well, you certainly have the enthusiasm. Tell me, going into public service once again, why do you want to go back in the fray with so much gridlock right now? What do you offer that's going to break the log jam in Sacramento? Well, you know, I have a demonstrated ability of being able to bring the, both sides together. To the extent that people are trying to get answers to the problems we have, I'm, I'm a problem solver by profession. I have a 
track record of working with both sides of the aisle on issues to protect our environment and to, again, on the, on the jobs uh, side, and also just making sure that we have a good ed quality education system, which is why I have the endorsement of virtually all of the education community. Well, that is great. Well, continued success in your Thank campaign. You. My Thank guest you. has been Hannah Beth Jackson. This is Bill Brank reporting for KADYTV.com.